Now this as speculation continues to swirl over who will form part of Donald Trump's cabinet. There has been no confirmation on who will be involved. There has been confirmation though on who won't be involved. That being Nick Nikki Haley and the former uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Donald Trump said in Truth Social yesterday that they won't be part of this next administration. Perhaps it's because of some disparaging comments that they've made about Donald Trump in the past that cost them this time. Or it might well be that Donald Trump is looking for a fresh administration with some fresh faces. Either way, on that note, let's bring in the former Commerce Secretary under Donald Trump, Wilbur Ross. Um, Wilbur, it's good to have you with us this morning. So when you, when you factor in that, that uh, Nikki Haley and Mike Pompeo, two pretty popular names and faces when it comes to the Republican Party that they won't be involved this time around. How are you reading into that? Well, I think that Donald Trump will have a much broader group from whom to pick this time than he had last time. Remember, when he was first elected, he had never had a big political organization before and his own staff at the real estate company was relatively limited. So he had to rely a lot on third party recommendations. And those don't always guarantee that the people they recommend will really be Trumpers, will really support his program. Mm. But now he's been through another campaign much better contact with the business community, much more broad contact within the Republican community. So I think he will have a much simpler time getting a very strong and cohesive cabinet together. Okay, in your wheelhouse of commerce then, would you expect Elon Musk to play a role? Well, Commerce is the most complicated department because it contains everything from the Census Bureau to the Patent and Trademark Office to 16 space satellites to the Bureau of Industry Standards. It goes on and on and on. So commerce is a peculiarly kind of conglomerative uh, operation in addition to its role in import tariffs and in export control. So it's a very complicated activity. But, but for, when it comes to, you know, the economy, would you expect Elon Musk to, to have an official role in the next Trump administration? Well, I was 79 years old when he appointed me Commerce Secretary in his first administration, and that was the oldest person ever appointed to a U.S. cabinet position. I'm now 87 years old, and I really don't want to have an 18-hour-a-day job anymore. I will try to help him in whatever way he would like, but uh, I, I really do think it's time for someone new to do the commerce job. Okay. Well, I mean, and someone new might well be Elon Musk, who has said that he could find up to $2 trillion in budget cuts. Do you doubt that, or do you think that he could do that? Well, I think that remains to be seen. Right now, the big thing we're trying to sweat out is will the Republicans control the House of Representatives? And that's important because of a couple of reasons. One, all revenue bills have to originate in the House. So a lot of President Trump's tax proposals clearly need House support. And second, if the Democrats were to control the House, there'd always be the danger they would gin up these ridiculous investigations all over again because the various House committees uh, have the power to do subpoenas and all that sort of thing. So I think from the point of view of really getting progress made, it's pretty important that Republicans control both the House and the Senate. Now, the Republican Party, like okay. most major parties, 
has various elements within it. So that's not saying that the extreme right will have control of either house. I don't think they will, but uh, we'll get a taste of that uh, next Wednesday when the vote comes for who is the new uh, majority leader in the Senate. One of um, Donald Trump's big policies was to increase tariffs on foreign imports. How much of an effect do you think that could have on some Australian products, Wilbur? Well, as you know, Australian products were granted a degree of relief, both from the steel tariffs and from the aluminum tariffs. So I assume that whoever is the new Commerce Secretary will be thoughtful about the inevitably special situations that arise. And Australia and U.S. have a wonderful alliance, strategic alliance, in terms of defense issues, and I'm sure that will carry over to some degree into other products. For example, we are very dependent on China for the processing of so-called rare earths, yet rare earths are not really that rare in terms of mineral reserves. We have a lot in the U.S. and Australia has a lot. So there's a logic that we may be able to cooperate and make more secure our supplies of the rare earths that are so essential to many high-tech products. And that's just one simple example. Do you think Australia might get a pass on those tariffs, Wilbur? I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. Perhaps we'll get a pass uh, in your view. We, we, we won't be caught up in those increased tariffs. Is, is that what you're hinting well, at? No, I'm not saying that there won't be any tariffs imposed on Australia. What I simply am saying is that last time, while we did put in a blanket tax on aluminum and yeah. on steel, we did grant, where appropriate, individual partner countries relief. And I would think that there will always be okay. some exceptions like that. Trade is a very, very complex thing, very, very hard to paint with one very broad brush. OK, uh, Wilbur Ross, the uh, former Commerce Secretary under Donald Trump last time around. Thank you so much for your time yeah, this morning. I just want to, to point out, folks, that uh, Wilbur's got the... Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> here it comes. Risks and rewards, creating success in business and life. There you go. That's there available from Wilbur Ross. Thanks for your time, Wilbur. So on that note, folks, send it back to you in the studio, Kenny.